guys have got to be kidding. You're two for 14 on the free throw line. I wasted an entire practice working on that. Two for 14, you've missed 12 free throws. 12. It would have been a blowout already. You've missed 12 free throws. You're not even trying to play together. I got one person diving, I'm going up for a layup. Nobody's trying to rebound for that. I have no playmakers today. That is a man. It's a man, set a screen, go for a layup. There's no place to be called. I don't need a play, I don't want to play. I just want you to score. Why aren't you playing like you're down by 20? You're down. You're not trying hard enough for me. All of a sudden I have us trying to feed law passes to post players running down the floor, posting up, since when? When do we practice that? I don't want my post players grabbing and making a spin move and going up. I want you to attack and look. We're wide open on a play finally and nobody's saying anything. You guys forgot about all the track days? You guys forgot every day the show's dead hot and you guys had to run miles and miles? These girls didn't do that. Yet they're out running you guys. They're out hustling you guys. Balls on the floor, they're getting there. You've done nothing good. How many points are you supposed to have already? You have eight. You want to run any more than you already have to run tomorrow? Continue playing like this. You're two for 14 on the free throw line. And it's because you're shooting a free throw and you're going like this. No confidence, none. I don't teach you guys that. Where's your confidence? Who wants to win? Exactly the problem, who wants to win? You don't. You're not playing like you do. Who cares what I say? You guys should be ignoring me and going out there playing as hard as you can. But instead you ignore me and you don't even play hard. Play hard. You guys are still in this game. The same thing happened, exactly the same thing happened last Burbank game. You're down by six points at halftime. You go in there, they completely blow it open. You're telling me you guys can't beat them one on one? All that stuff they talked to you guys during the game last time, all the time they pushed you guys around last time, you're not mad? He even told me, oh, my kids got really physical with you guys. It's like a friendly rivalry. No, it's not. They're not my friends. It's not a friendly rivalry to me. Are they your friends? No. They're not your friends. Get mad. You got a girl grabbing rebounds and blocking your shots. You guys don't care? You're giving this girl who's blocking your shot way more credit than you gave number 33 at, Ver at La Cunada. Wake up. You're not playing hard enough. You guys want to win this game? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. You're not enthusiastic enough. Do you guys want to win this game? Yes! Hands in here. Run down on three. One, two, three. Run down! Welcome to Glendale High School in Glendale, California, home of the Dynamiters, also known as the Nitros. Some may ask, why make a documentary about a girls' soft frosh basketball team? Well, let me start by introducing myself. Yeah, that's me, the guy you saw courtside all season long with the camera. Some refer to me as Chris, others call me TK. But around here, they just call me Erica's dad. Oh, there she is, Erica. Isn't she cute? Yeah, that might have something to do with the making of this film, but there's more to it than that.
Now that you've met the Nitros, let's talk about its heart and soul. Introducing Coach Mona. Her passion for the game and her girls is what motivated me to pick up the camera. Some say she's too hard on her team. Well, check it out for yourself. Tough love coaching. I ran three a few minutes ago. Why did you ruin my play? You're just standing. Move! Get open, walk her in, pop back out. You gotta make yourself open. Why would I want you to shoot a jump shot? You're a big body, go in there and try to get a foul. Give me the ball more! Come on! You're not playing well enough. This is a season game. Pick it up! It's obvious that coach is not messing around. Play hard or go home. I got a chance to sit down and interview Coach Mona. Here's what she had to say. There we go, we're rolling. How you doing, Coach? Good, how are you? Okay, doing good. Okay, now let's discuss your coaching style and how it relates to your team. Oh, God. I coach freshmen and they're girls. So they have like all these thoughts running through their head. I need to be louder than all those thoughts. You know, they're concerned about who walks in and who's cheering and who's talking. I need to be louder than that. I've always had really loud, rowdy coaches growing up. So at CV, I had them. When I played for, like, Little Falcons, I had them. I think it just naturally, like, picked it up. Some parents from the opposing teams had voiced, and I've witnessed this myself, that they think you were too hard on your girls or too emotional, especially because it's only soft crotch basketball in their eyes. Uh, what do you have to say to them? Um, nothing. Um, that's just how I coach. If I had players that didn't want to play for me, I would step back and say something I'm doing wrong. Um, my players want to play for me. I'm happy they want to play for me. They don't want to leave, like, my team is because of the way I coach. Um, my varsity coach doesn't, isn't, doesn't go against it. I've had my, like, staff from Glendale come and tell me, like, this is a good thing. So if, if I was hearing, like, negative, negativity from people who were behind me, then I would completely change. But opposing teams were just mad because my teams are beating them. <laughs> my teams are doing better. Thanks for the insight, Coach. We wouldn't want you any other way. Now it's time to get down into the trenches. Defense.
Bears coach again talking about a slow start to the 2014 regular season. Your team started off 0-2 at the beginning of the season, both bad losses in each game. CBS 50, 27 GHS, and the second game was 40-32 to against Burroughs. What was your feeling at that moment about moving forward when things looked bleak? Um, I'm like a very, very big believer in teams I coach. Like if I think that they went hard for the first three or four months, I have no doubt in my mind. Um, I knew CV was a hard team to beat. They were all very good players. Um, that, that was not as big of a shock to me. Um, I think when we lost to Burroughs, it was a shock to my own kids because they had built up to want to win. And um, the type of coach I am from the very beginning, I don't care what group I have, I tell them we need to be winning all, all the games. I'm not a losing coach. You're not doing it for the experience, you're doing it because you need to win games. You'll get that experience when you win. So in my mind, um, the 0-2 didn't bother me or shock me. If anything, I was kind of glad because then it kind of puts some fire into them wanting to win. Sometimes to really apply the pressure, a double team is necessary. I call this one attack. see our Nitros won their next two games and Burbank was up next on the schedule. Well, if you remember the beginning of this movie, that didn't go too well.
but a rivalry was born. As the girls prove in this next clip, even when down, they can take a hit. next segment our girls can bring it to rock out to the dynamiters greatest hits
I know they're being a little feisty. Yeah. Stop fouling. I don't care. You're playing a contact sport. There's a swimming pool over there. <laughs> you don't, you don't want to be pushed? I know. You don't want to push? Swim. In the first game against your main rival, Hoover High School, game number six, uh, oh. right from the get-go, you seemed upset with the team, even though they were winning by at least seven points throughout the entire contest. Actually winning the game by nine points, 25 to 34. Can you explain why you were so hard on the girls in this winning situation? So, okay, I, I still remember this, so quote me on this. Um, before the game started, they were all really excited and they'd all heard stories about Hoover. And I told them, it's a hard game because Hoover wants to beat us just as bad because they've never beat us. I've beat Hoover by 70 before, 60 actually. And I told them, your goal is not to embarrass them, but to play just, that, just as hard. You want to beat them by a lot of points. Now, because they had heard that Hoover wasn't very good, they walked in all excited. Before the game started, and quote me on this part, I told them, you guys better not start the game down by seven points, two to nine. That was exactly what it was. We had scored two points, and they had scored nine. So I called timeout as soon as that happened and told them that I told you so. As soon as we gave Hoover like the, a little bit of space to think that they might keep up with us, they started playing harder. And as hard as Hoover started playing, we started playing worse. And yeah, if we... Momentum. Yeah, exactly. And if we look back at like our last game, we beat Hoover by 32 points, 33 points. So if you were able to beat them by 33 points last time, nine points was not good enough for me. Now it's time to check out a little offense from the outside. Also known as the Natalie Karina Show. Three, two, one, bingo!
Of course, we love to watch our girls compete, play the game, mix it up. But the best part about this team is the families are close and new friendships were being forged. Let the good times roll. So you let them roll on. Let them roll on and on and on. Let the good times. Let them roll on and on and on. Let the good times. Let them roll on and on and on. Let the good times. your puffy eyes. It's time to get your head back in the game. In this piece, you will see that sometimes it takes more than one shot to get that ball in the basket. How many chances? As you witnessed earlier, family and friends were always there to cheer our Lady Nitros on. But there was another group of guys that need to be mentioned. 
the GHS football guys. Home or away, these guys were there, teasing the other team and taunting the referees. Crowd comments. After losing Game 7, now with a 3-4 record, the 2014 season just wasn't looking that great. But as you will see in this next clip, if you keep on fighting, you never know what can happen. My ball.
It looks like Coach is finally getting through to her team. Three convincing wins in a row. And once again, Burbank is up next on the schedule. But for now, hmm, did our Nitros take a few acting lessons? Decide for yourself. Fake? No, but Burbank was our rival this year. Definitely. Sometimes you want to get into your opponent's head, cause confusion, get all up in their face. I call this one ba 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 ba. I wish, I wish, not not being negative, I wish you guys played like this from the beginning, the beginning of the season. Because season not guys, one team would be able to compete with you guys. Not one team. You guys have played flawless for two games. Like absolutely perfect. I have no complaints. You let up shots, some shots go in, we make some mistakes, flawless. I could not ask for a better last two games. I am so proud. I can't wait for our next few games. I can't. I actually can't wait to play Burbank. Yeah. Oh I'm so excited. <laughs> 
as the Burbank rivalry builds up. Let's recap the history between the two teams. If you go back to the opening of this movie, you'll remember Coach being really annoyed about a preseason blowout loss, which led to another loss during Game 5 of the regular season. During Game 5 in Burbank, this being the first game between the two teams, for most of the contest, Burbank physically dominated the court. But if you recall, during the late third quarter, your girls mounted a comeback after being down by seven points. Glendale was actually up by one point in the fourth quarter with less than six minutes left in the game. Burbank became more aggressive and did eventually win the contest 38 to 29. I also noticed the over excessive celebrating on the Burbank bench. Do you think this type of in your face disrespect lit a fire under your team when it comes to contesting Burbank? Um, not to say anything bad about their program. I, their head coach was my head coach, great guy. But uh, I think that's just like a team thing. Personally, I would never allow my children to do that, my, my players to do that. That's not okay with me. I want to stay classy, doesn't matter. Uh, but that they did that, that was fine with me. Um, I think our kids had what I heard like was like their little drama with Burbank. So I think that lit their fire, like that, that fueled them. But other than that, I think, I mean, them cheering up and down a little bit would irritate me and then I would be done with it. And then I think they talked to some of my players after the games were done. I made sure that stopped. But I mean, your kids and you're playing in high school, game it's intense yeah you're you're kind of excited i think if i allowed my kids to they'd celebrate too but i'm not that kind of coach <laughs> they're not allowed to do that quite yet when you coach with passion there will always be confrontation with that person in stripes the ref the official the zebra bad call ref
guys said it yesterday, not me. Because I mean, you guys gotta be talking in the entire time. How bad do you guys want to work? Really, really bad. bad. Okay, so you guys really gotta work. Come here, real quick. <laughs> So you're gonna go out today. I don't want a single word out of you guys. Everything will be shown on the scoreboard. So depending on how hard you guys want to play, it'll be up there on the scoreboard. Okay, you guys want to back up your teammates and what they call your teammates, then you guys put up points and produce. Got it? Yes. Let's go play hard together. Go ahead and allow on three. One, two, three. Glendale! Game day, in Glendale, first Burbank. The pre-game footage says it all. You told nervous. your team to forget about any drama, leave it all out on the court. Did you have a good feeling about winning this game before it started? Yeah, a very good feeling actually. But I, I think they just messed with my emotions so much throughout those four quarters. Talk about a roller coaster. Oh my god, I have white hair because of you guys now. <laughs> Welcome to the halftime show at Glendale High School in Glendale, California, where the Nitros trail the Bulldogs by four points with the whole half of basketball still yet to be played. But now, for your halftime entertainment, we bring to you Laugh Out Loud.
they're shooting videos or when they're screaming things out from their bench. Does it bother you guys? I don't know where you are today. 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 Thought you guys really want to win. Thought you guys didn't like they called your player a name and you guys were going to go out and step up for her. They should apologize to you. I'm sorry they're not. What happened? You guys can't break a damn press? We bring it, fine. We get up here, we throw it away. Why? How hard is it? Take care of the ball. How hard is it to take care of the ball? I'm asking you a question. Answer my question. How hard is it to take care of the ball? If you can't take care of it, sit. <coughs> How hard is it? Play hard. We have two games together. You're showing me zero effort. Not even a little. You're showing zero effort.
a heart attack again. <laughs> I'm not joking, you guys. Seriously, please give me so much. Okay? Thank you very much for winning that game. The fans in here, good job, guys. Blend on three, one, two, three. Go down! Hell yeah! What a heck of a contest. But now, it's time for a little after game fun. It's always tough being at the free throw line, especially when you're being distracted. You can't help but be annoyed by those pesky free throw jokers. that the final Burbank game was decided. I was curious about Coach Mona's perspective during those last few moments of the game. Score is 31-32 Burbank, 21 seconds left on the clock. Glendale is on the offensive, you call a timeout, down by one point. Tell me about the play that was drawn up and about what was said at this crucial time during the game. Um, that was the same play I drew up I want to say before halftime or maybe right after halftime and we completely messed it up which now that I think back on it I think it was a great thing that we messed it up because they didn't know how to like stop us when it finally got to free throw line like it happened to get to the free throw line I called the timeout because I would get the ball underneath the basket we drew up the play oh, what was that it was called stack we drew up stack and they just they killed it 
And I remember telling them, either it was on that timeout or the timeout before, like, if you guys don't win this game, you guys, like, deserve to now. Because you finally did what you were supposed to do. Here's the play. Here's the win. Uh, what were you feeling at this time, seeing your team and the Glendale crowd so elated? Just watching that. I think, I mean, you guys are, like, laughing at me. I think I had one of my friends watch it the other day. And I was like, can you just, like, watch how, forget the play. Watch how my bench reacts. And my bench just jumped up. Like, I had never seen them so happy for one another. Like, they, a, a bunch of girls didn't get on the floor that day. A bunch of girls got barely any playing time that day. It, you can watch a timeout. You could look at the timeout, and my starting five is dead tired. It just drains you so much. And they, I feel like they all pulled through for each other, uh, and for me too. But bigger than us winning that game was we came back against a good team to win that game. Down by 11. And 11 is a lot for a freshman team. That's like a varsity team being down by 31. On the run! On the run! On the run! Well, well, well. After a five-game winning streak, our Lady Nitros end the season with an 8-4 and four record. Not bad for a team that started out at 0-2. Now, here's Coach with a few final words. Speaking of the crowd, do you have anything to say to the parents and supporters of the team? Yeah, thank you guys. They, um, I've never had so much parent support. I, I literally feel like, like it was like a little family, with me included. Lastly, do you have any words for your 2014 South Cross basketball Dynamiters for your girls? God, um, I think the first thing I'll say is thank you for putting up with me. I'm not the easiest person to please. What made this group special is that like, they not only worked hard, but in the beginning they, wouldn't even, they didn't think they were good enough and they still worked hard. They're just, they, they actually defined like playing for each other. Like th this was actually like the one, the one group I've had that really played for each other. Because if they didn't play for each other, they wouldn't have accomplished anything. I'll never give up. I'll never, never give up. up. Because if I do, because if I do, I give up on the ones inside me. I give up on the ones inside me. I will never give up. I will never give up. Because if I do, because if I do, I give up on the ones who believe in me. I give up on the ones who believe in me. When the person next to me is down. When the person next to me is down. I will pick her up. I will pick her up. And she's the same. And she's the same. I will never give up. I will never give up. Yeah.